disciplines we needed, that's wonderful. But without the gospel that will change the life, what the attorney is saying to us will never happen. But this is a beautiful program and she presented to us a reality. May so na sa Cordoba? Cyber sex. Sex. Are you listening? Sex. Gipangutan ang babae, what is your reason for longevity? Sex. Sleep. Eat. Exercise. But she's not talking about sleep and eat and exercise. This is immorality. Mao nga kita ng mga parents, kung dili ta mag-careful ang atong mga bata, ma-victimize. Purting dagang internet. Internet dire, internet dito sa tubangan, diya sa pika sa may alopes kwan, alopes o kanang katipunan, na ay mga internet diha. Ingay urara, internet, kafe. Kafe ha? Magkaon ka? Pero ito na binastos. O tanawa. Kung gusto niyo yung huwag binastos, ito sa kandingan. And I will tell you, it's very easy to take care of the, even the schools. Sa mga eskwilahan, kamong mga, kamong mga parents, abin ninyo, giganahan kamo sa public schools, ang inyong mga kabataan, they learned that we came from the monkey. Pero magsoon, dili kumusugot ang akong grandfather, monkey. Unya ang atong matutuluan pa din uban things that, my friend, listen carefully, not only that, but things are immoral in every place we go, unless you have the Christian school that will teach your children. And I thank God for Attorney Guigo here and for her part in bringing enlightenment to the hearts of the people. Everybody standing up, please. Let's sing, uh, I Find a Thrill. Together, let's sing. I love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. Love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. What a sight just to see all the happy faces praising God in heavenly places. What a thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people Now it can teach us anywhere Two or three are gathered there That the Spirit of the Lord will be there too There's no fellowship so sweet There's no thrill that can compete with the thrill I feel whenever God's children meet I love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people Love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people What a sight just to see all the happy faces Praising God in heavenly places What a thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people Loving Father, we thank you for the blessed time we have In your presence and in the Word of God We thank you for Attorney Guico and for the report that she made today I pray that our people, the families, will be aware about the danger of neglecting our children. I ask your blessings upon this offering today, and Lord, thank you for allowing our people to become a part of the great movement of people, not only in the Philippines, but around the world. I praise you for this privilege that we have. Bless the offering, bless our choir. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you, and here's the choir.
Sagdan. Where is the husband? Where is, me? Where is Brother Pinasagdan? Is here? Brother, stand, stand. That is Brother Pinasagdan. <laughs> Nindot ka yung kanta, no? One day at a time. You live one day at a time. Uh, do you have a Bible? Stand with me and open to Genesis 28. Genesis 28. We're going to read here from verse 9. From verse 10 to verse number 19. Genesis 28. If you are there, say amen. amen. I will read verse number 10, and then you read verse number 11 until verse number 19, okay? Verse number 10. Genesis 28, verse 10. And Jacob went out from Beersheba, and went toward Haran.
Can you imagine natulog ka ang imuun lang bato? No? Basta't nalayo ka sa ginoo, ang imong kanon, dili kanon. Ang imong unlan, dili unlan. Oh? Verse number 12. And he dreamed and behold a ladder set up on the earth. And the top of it reached to heaven and behold the angels of God ascending and descending in it. And they see shall be as the dust of the earth. Can you imagine, have you ever seen a family? Ang ilang children ang kadaghanon, dust of the earth? Nigtanaw niyo mo sa kwan, na ang mga anak ay abog, kadaghanon. You know what that means? It is the dust of the earth. It is beyond compare. It is beyond counting. There is no number of blessing when God blesses you. You do not count your problems. You count your blessing. And the more you count your blessing, the more blessings God blesses you. Like that's of the earth. And thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east, and to the north and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep. Can you imagine lisud ka matulog ng ang imong onlan bato? Pero kini siya natulog unya nagdamgo pa gyud. Can you imagine when a man is so backslidden, he does not know whether it's the stone or the lid. Tanaw ha? He awoke and you know what he said? Surely the Lord is in this place. He was far away from God. Kaya nidagan sa saying egzon si Iso. Now he said, "This place, the Lord is here, and I knew it not." And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that had put for his pillows, ang bato ng ayang giunlan. To set up for a pillar, gihimo nyang pillar. When you put a stone for a pillar, one that means you recognize the power of God, and poured oil on top of it. Verse 19 together, and he called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of the city was called Luz at the first. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. And today, speak to us and make us understand that our life can be in the same pattern as the life of Jacob, away from God, away from blessing, problems, difficulties, heartaches. And here he is coming to the Lord. We love you and we thank you for your mercies. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Bethel. Beth means house. El means God. Bethel, the house of God. Amen? Bethel, the house of God. Now in this story, we see Jacob running away from his brother Esau. And the reason why he's running away from his Esau because he dealt with his brother deceptively. Iyang gibinuangan ng egzon. Say this, Brad. Giilad niya. Iyeng soon, dasuko ang iyeng soon. Kamo mga bana, usahay masuko ang inyong asawa. Tuon kay inyong giilat inyong asawa. Ang inyong swil doon ta three thousand per week. Ang inyong gihatag one thousand alang. Ngano man giilat man. As a result of his sin, as a result of his wickedness. And he spends the night in a place called Luz, where God Almighty comes down and reveals Himself to Jacob. And then Jacob says, "This is a wonderful place." 
God is here. Now he was in Luz, he was in the house of God, he was in Bethel, and his this is a good place. And what happens? He turns away from God. He knew that God was there. He knows that's the place of God, that's the house of God. But he turns away from God. There are many people like that. They know this is a place that God's word is being preached. That they learn the word of God. You know what happened? They go away from Bible Baptist Church. And I will tell you this. This is not a lesson just for you and for me. For all of us. That this is happening every day. He spends the night. Now Jacob, remember, was the third generation Christian. Abraham was his grandfather. Abraham, Isaac was his father. And I think there is no doubt that, Ab that, that Jacob was familiar with the things of God because his parents are Christians. We are familiar with Bible. We are familiar with prayer. We are familiar with, with prayer, praying before eating. We are familiar with all those things. There is no doubt that Jacob had many memories about sitting in the family and grandfather will tell us about the experience that he had with God. Then they will sit in the, in, the, in the family altar and they will listen to Isaac and tell about the experience God gave to him. Jacob was not ignorant about Christian things. And many of us are not ignorant about Christian things. We know the Bible. Do you have a Bible? Say amen. amen. We are not ignorant about that book. We are not ignorant about how to live the Christian life. We are not ignorant about our duties. And yet, Many times, we do not even put our hand to things that are godly. I will listen carefully. When you, if you die one day, you will face two legacies. A good legacy and a bad legacy. What is the bad legacy? When you live in this world, things outside of God, things that are not eternal, you are going to live in a legacy that is not eternal. But a godly legacy belongs to those that will give to the Lord in their finances. They will spend their time surrendering, serving the Lord, loving the Lord, and keeping their minds on the work that God has given to them. My friend, I will say this to you. Many of you have good business. Wonderful. There's nothing, nothing wrong with good business. Many of you are teaching and they have a good job. But my friend, if the thing that you are doing does not connect to the interest that God's name will be glorified, you are missing the point or the purpose of your business. Okay, if, I, if you are a businessman, I will tell you this. If you will involve your business, your earning, in something that will preach the gospel, one day when you face God, your legacy will be those that are eternal. But if you draw it away, I'm going to become a part of the saturation team. I'm not going to be a part of the, the, the activities of the church. I'm not going to be a part of this giving. I'll just be in business and business, earning money, earning day. My friend, you can have all the money in the world. But if at the end you are in a bad legacy, it is useless. When I was growing up, a poor boy in the barrio, there were things that will close my opportunities. But you know what made maybe go out of the barrio? I determined in my heart that all the, 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 uh, the poverty and all the, uh, uh, the things that hinder my going out to find what, is, what it means to really succeed. I began to say to the Lord, Lord, I was not yet saved. But I was saying, Lord, please help me that I will get out of this barrio. I'll get out of this poverty. And I'll be able to see what, is, what, what life is better. And one day when I went to college, I got saved and I found out that the best life is a life lived with Jesus Christ. Amen. My friend, at the end of the road, you will either be having plenty of money but bad legacy. Or at the end of the road, You'll spend your money for the Lord and for the ministry, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
you will end up in a good legacy. If you're a businessman or somebody, a teacher, or worker, a family, and you don't even go and do the extent of what you are supposed to do, you cannot expect God to say, well done. Thou good and saves your servant. That is only to people who decides and determines that their legacy will be godly. Jacob, what's that? He lost his chance because he went away. He knew that Bethel was the house of God. He knew that God was there. And he said, this is a good place. But he went away. And he departed. And there are times, you know, parents were godly. But they, they raised their children in a Christian environment. Then they, they have grandchildren, the third and fourth generation. And all of a sudden, the grandchildren become bored about Christian life. They become disinterested in the Bible and the Sunday school and the church and the godly life. They have become interested. And parents, listen carefully. When you have children, bring them to Sunday school. Don't let them stay here. Kung sa may masabto nila di sa adult department, masabto nila dito sa adults, I mean, children's Sunday school, na, na may picture. Ang mga bata, di liman makabasa. Di liman makasabot o words, pero makasabot sila picture. Kaya ito sa gamay pa ako, di liman na grade 1, grade 2, di liman ko kahibong magbasa. Na ako'y ruler nga ka ng, ka ng ruler nga ka ng kawayan ba? Nigbasa na ako, anak ko, mama, basa kini. Nasa ibabaw sa ruler. pag sa mga pictures, bisag dili ko butang ruler, kay buho ko sa, sa picture. Ang inyong mga bata, dili sila makasabot sa leksyon ni Bader Sibunga Diri. Asa niyo da doon? Dito sa Sunday School sa Kabataan. Yeah, that in your diary, around, around the uh, basic, basic delicado. My son, kining simbahan, dili delicado, riba sa tudluan sa pulong sa ginoo. Yeah. Ang uban nato, dili pa eskwela hawa na ato, mga apo. Mga kabataan, wag simba. Do you expect a godly life in that situation? Jacob went away. With all the privileges. He was not interested Jacob was very familiar with the things of God. But he lost his love for the things of God. He lost his love for the things of God. God made a covenant with him. And Jacob raised a pillar and acknowledged that God was there. But, God, but Jacob seemed to, to say, I am not interested in this right now. I know God spoke to me. He will bless me. He will not leave me. He will take care of my family. And this, my seed and the families of the earth will bless because of me. But I'm not interested in this right now. I'm not interested. I'm not, there are many young people like that. I'm not interested in the youth department. I'm not interested in Bible. I'm not interested in Sunday school. Go ahead and waste your life. And one day, you'll be like Jacob. Listen carefully. When a man comes at the end of the road, that's the beginning of God. And it will come to you. If you're not careful, your life will end one day in discouragement, disappointment. You better believe me, if you leave God out of your life, you are foolish and the most crazy person in the world. And I believe when we came into this world, we brought nothing in. It is certain we will carry nothing out. Do not ever think that the, that the statue that you have today because of the material things that you have. Material thing is the least blessing that you can have in your life. You can have all the cars. An American family, they're in America. Brother Salva, I do not need to come to church. I said, oh, brother, please come. I will go to preach tonight. Okay, okay. He will not come to church. He has a beautiful house, beautiful family, 
Every child has a car. And it looks like sa Cebu, mahimu ta. Nga naman, makapalit ka auto, 40 is 49 mil. 49,000, makapalit ka na kwarto. Ako ka na kwarto. Ka na auto, dili kwarto ha. Ang umansad, kwarto ang ilang palit doon. Pero auto, makapalit ka, 49,000, makapalit ka karoon o ka ng Terra, Nissan, 99,000, Purtim baratuha. So every child may auto sa Amerika. Naikwan na sila'y kanaganing uh, para sa lake. Speedboat. Na sila'y kanang snowmobile. Tanan. Hindi just kaya kanang snowmobile sa, sa lasang ba? Na sila. Dagkuang ilang iro, wana, de ba, de salva, I do not need God, I have all of these things. My son, if that is your philosophy, that is the wrong way. Look at this gentleman right here, Steve Macon. I am really glad for where he is. But my friend, there are many people in, in the place where he comes from that only involve in things of the world and not of the Lord. Number one, point number one, what did it cost Jacob to depart from God? Number one, what did it cost him? In Genesis 28, verse number 21, she said, So that I come again to thy father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. The condition of the Lord is the condition of the Unya imo akong at sabangan nga maba mobile ko sa akong pamilya nga in peace then you will be my god. And Jacob is saying, Lord, after I go out in the world for a little while and do what I have to do and I plan to do then I will come back to you. I will God will be my god. After I will spend my life in the world, I will, God will be my God. God said, don't marry unbeliever. But if I got married to the unbeliever and spend my life with the unbeliever, after that, then God will be my God. And my friend, you can live two lives. Life with God, life without God. And here is Jacob. He was on his own. He did not want God to interfere with his plans. And there are many Christians and, and, and members of the Bible of the church and families that do not want God to interfere with their plans. Jacob lived for himself and what, and what we see in, in the church today and among some many people, everybody is, not, is out for themselves doing what they want to do god is not in their in god is not their god everybody wants jesus to be their savior but they do not want jesus to be their lord jesus 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 pero inom lagi habog to ba jesus jesus Unless the Lord Jesus will become your Lord, you will be the same from the beginning until the end. Everyone wants God to save them from hell, but nobody wants to listen to the Word of God. And I will tell you this. Sometimes we come to the Sunday school and we are just there, not even looking at the Bible, not even looking at the lesson. We just do right there. As if the word of God is not important. My friend, if there is anything that will change you and bless you, it is the word of God. Amen. You cannot get away from God and say, well, I want the Lord to be blessed. My friend, if you are not attending Sunday school, you do not want the blessings of God. The morning you will, not, you will come here, you will not even attend Sunday school. And when you are attending Sunday school, you are not even listening. I don't care if your parents are Christians. If you are not willing to do personal relationship with God, you are not going to be happy. And behold, 
the Lord stood above it. I am the Lord thy God. Can I you know huh? Verse number 13. The Lord God of Abraham and the God of Isaac. The land, the, the land where, where on thou liest, to thee will I give it and thy seed. Notice, God said, I am the Lord thy God of Abraham and the Lord God of Isaac. He didn't say, I am the Lord God of Jacob. No, he didn't say that. He's Jacob, I am the God of your grandfather. I am the God of your father. Jacob, I am the God of your pastor. I am the God of your church, but you are not even, I am not even your God. Can you imagine, here is a man who knows everything about God and the things of God, but he is not with God, he's away from God. There's some Christians, they want to go out and they don't like to come to church on Sunday. Like so, you better be me. You go to Ayala today or go, go to SM. There are Christians that are supposed to be here today, but they are there. To us as an R, buy one, take one, Karon. To anam Christian. You know that? Buy one, take one. Magpalit ka usa kalamisa, tagaan ka another lamisa. Ang usa ka lamisa is 2,500. Magpalit ka usa, tagaan ka another. O ang mga Christian, nagpalit, buy one, take one. Ang bag, buy one, take one. Lipstick, buy one, take two. Stockings, buy one, take one, sad. Oh, na na. Peanut butter, buy one, take none. <laughs> but people are afraid to this thing. They say, my, what are you? Oh, I wish I had money. You can have all the money. But if you can have all the money and then end up away from God, you are the most foolish man in all the world. I don't want that one day when I die, the rewards are being given and my name will not even be called. You're getting the, the rewards. Then you begin to bite your nails and say, Ang ako nga, no, ako itawga in town. Have you seen people like that? with all the work that you are doing, and Christians who are supposed to be faithful, they become unfaithful. You know what it costs, they, uh, Jacob? Number two, the cause of his, of his, of his uh, of departure. Number one, he messed up his married life. Jacob was marrying one woman after another woman. And my friend, if you are a Christian, you cannot live that way. If you are married today, kinahanglan kasal mo. Kay kung huwa mo makasal, immoral. pag mo eh. Kinahanglan kung minyo ka, kasal mo. Kay kung nagpuyo mo, niya huwa mo makasal, purting immoral mo. Kinahanglan. Unyo kong minyo sad mo, panggang inyong mga asawa. Oh, ang inyong, ang inyong mga asawa, dili mga asawa. Ang inyong asawa. Ikaw nga babae sad, panggang inyong mga bana, o oh, dili mga bana, mga ba, dili bana, mga bana, bana lang. You know God's covenant of order in marriage? One man, one woman. One wife, one life. And my friend, you can abuse this. Many people that are kings, monarchs, they have plenty of wives and they put them in different rooms. We call that harem. Harem. The other word is siraglio. Harem. Solomon have 1,000 wives. Every evening he will have a jack employee. Which room I will be in? 
Kaya niyo ayun, usah ka libo ang iyong asawa? Kaya nga ako gani nga, usah lang ni. Pero puting gura na ako ane, oy. Kaya nga usah pa ka libo gyud, puting lipstick ay mong balito na na, hindi kung noon, kung buy one take one, okay lang. Kung minyo ka, usah lang iyong bana. Nya ka ng daghan. Ayaw na. Kung babae, kung lalaki ka, usah lang iyong asawa. Nga nung duha man iyong asawa. Kining usah, nga guwapa, para ni pang baile. Ka nang dili guwapa, para daro. Eh, amo na. Ikaw si pa niyang asawa para baile o para daro. Noon siya ka, oy. He missed, he messed up his life. God does not want you to live. God has better plan for you. If you are a woman and you are not married, God has a one man for you. Ayaw ka, Gaul. Pastor, Trinta ito sa narbako. Ayaw, gihapog ka gol. Pastor, Trinta ito ibi. Kana, magol ka na. He messed up his married life. Number two, he messed up his money. Can you imagine, ha? Here is a deceiver. And he worked for Laban for many years, Brad. He worked for Laban. And he said, Laban deceived me and he got hurt. Ang deceiver say deceiver? No. Ang mangingilad, wala makagusto sa giilad siya. Pero sa akong klasmain ka si Bobby, tagapangasinan. Dear tatay, pagkipadala po ninyo ng pera kasi nadukutan po ako. Ang papa nag-telegram in answer, Bobby, Ang ibig kong magsabihin yung mandurukot na dukutan? <laughs> when Bobby was not in medical school, he was in Metro Manila, he was a mandurukot. Mandurukot o siya isip. Aka na mangungot. Kamong mga lalaki, mangungot mo. Ang ibig kong magsabihin, ang mandurukot na dukutan? Jacob, you mean you don't want to be deceived, but you are a deceiver? Bila na siya, yung dahog kao na eh. Pero siya, mas dako. He messed up his money. Verse 7. He was working for Laban. And the Bible says in verse 7, Genesis 31, 7, And your father hath deceived me and changed my wages ten times, but God suffered him not to hurt me. When a man departs from God, he will not prosper. He cannot enjoy the blessings of the world. You think you're enjoying? Ipatestimony ko itong bayot sa aryo. Ingon sa bayot, inigtanaw ni mo sa amo, murag makikita mo nga kami malipayon. Dili kami malipayon, kana sa guwa lang, pero sa sulod na mo, gusto na mo nga makikitag tinood nga kalipay. Bayot, na-save. Dara sa aryo. Reformer siya ni Mos. Si Paul dito sa Katarman, nagbuhali ako dito, na-save si Paul. After the service, gipatis niya mo ni Badil Sami. Paul, ano mo sasabi mo? Tinanggap mo ba si Jesus Christ? Opo, Pastor, opo. Then, Paul got baptized, and he was discipled. Today, you know the desire of Paul, he wants his father to really and parents to be saved. Unya si Paul ang iyang sinina, lalaki na giyod. Lalaki. Kaniya to ang iyang buhok ana.
karon para saan eh? Para saan eh? Para sa inyong buhok, dili ka ng upawa, ka ng... You know what changed his life? The Word of God. He missed his marriage. He missed his money. And number three, he, he, he missed up his mind. Look at me in the book of Deuteron- I mean, uh, Genesis, chapter, chapter, uh, uh, chapter 37, 32, verse 7. The Bible says in Genesis 32, verse 7, Then Jacob was greatly afraid and dis- distressed. You know why he was afraid? He said, Oh God, deliver me because my brother Esau will kill me. Bastad ka ng, sa akin, si Bad, mangilad. Bastad mangilad ka, mahadlo ka permis sa imong kinabuhi. Oh, giilad niya, ang yag soon. Karo na hadlok siya kay nangilad siya. Doon ay mga tao nga mangilad. O niya, makagsala, wag yun mahadlok. Kanang kristuhanon nga nag-immoral, o niya, wag yun makumbiktid, basi bayag dili na luwas. Tinood na? I don't think that person is really saved. Because a person who is saved and he goes into the scene, you will be convicted. The cause of his departure, the cause of his departure, it made his marriage mess up. It made his money mess up and his mind mess up. Lastly, what is the cure for his departure? For many years, Jacob lived a life without God. He lived a life doing things his own way. Then everything that could go wrong went wrong in the life of Jacob. Jacob went through many heartaches and problems. He was at the end of himself. I quoted this earlier. When you are at the end of yourself, that is the beginning of God. That is the beginning of God. And so because of that, he had problems, he had difficulties, he had heartaches, he was the end of himself. Then in Genesis 32 verse 9, here's what he said. And Jacob went to the Lord in prayer and said, O God of my father Abraham, the God of my father Isaac, the Lord will say unto me, Return unto thy country and thy kindred, and I will deal with thee. You know what? This is the first time that Jacob prayed to God. And he called him, O God of my fathers. He prayed. O God of my fathers. 1953. I was in Bungabo, Midora. I was working in the electric company. I got sick, high fever, and I could not believe that this, the fever was there for the next, the next week. Usually, as a young person, you have experienced this, that when you get sick, you are young, you get sick today, tomorrow you are okay. Pero kinilahi, I got sick, then the fever went away, and then the fever went back. When the fever went back and I could not help myself, I remembered my mother. And I remembered my father. And I cried and said, Lord, wala pa kumasaiba. Ginoo, pabalik ako sa akong mama o sa akong papa. Kanya ito kami, basta masakit. Ang akong mama, mukhang mo ano na. Ito, kamusta ka to? Mayaman ma. Unya, kung sa may imong gustong ka noon, matagay akong orange. Di imang good may tagag orange unless masakit. Maunang gusto na akong magkasakit, Aron mo kayo ng orange? Ma, kung pwede ma, tagay ako orange. O sige, palit-palit ang orange. Duha ka butilya, ha? Duha ka butilya. Duha ka butilya yun. Puro yung lipayin na ako, pero ang paper na agihapon. And I went home. 
Then I told my mama, I said, Mama, I'm coming home. I'll be arriving this day. I'll take the, the sailboat. I'll be uh, in, the, in the town. I'll be there. I may be in, I will be there at home about 9 o'clock in the morning. Mga egso, ng akong papa o mama to, 9 o'clock in the morning. Diyo to bangan sa among balay nga kawayan sa bukid. Kawayan. Inig bagyo diri mo, ana. Inig balik sa bagyo, ana, sad. And my father and my mother was waiting for me. Folks, I did, not, I did not explain what I went through. But my mother was hugging me and crying. Then my father came in and hugged me also. And right there together with them, he said, Ayaw nagbalik sa Mindoro. Kay karong, karong hunyo, mo iskwila ka sa Iloilo. Mga isong puto na ako ako. Eh. Nawa ang hilanat. The reason why I stood away, my sisters were going to college, but I am not in college. Nahiubos ko eh. Bisag ka mo, mahiubos mo. Antana ng aminyo, kamuha, mahiubos. <laughs> Jacob prayed. What happened to Jacob is that you cannot live a happy life without God. Amen. And so we find that, you know, you need God in every decision that you make. You need God. You need to take care of your wife. Labi na good kung play kay mami nga, dili kami makatulog kung gabi kay sigla kao ni. Pero pinanggal ang gihapon niyo eh. Mami smile sa doy. Tanawa na. To take care of your children, you need God. To take care of your responsibilities in this world, I cannot do it without God. And all the things that needs to be done, God enables me. God spoke to Jacob again in Genesis 35 verse 1. Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there. Okay, Jacob, here's what you need to do, Dong. You want to come back? Go back to Bethel. My friend, every time you think about Bethel, that's the first place God wanted him to be. Bethel. If you're going to come back to the Lord, come back to Bethel. Why in Bethel? One, the pillar is there. Why in Bethel? There is the place where you consecrate yourself. Son, arise, go back to Bethel. After living away from God for 20 years, he goes back to Bethel. Jacob decides to allow God now to take control of his life. Lord, ikaw na may kontrolar na akong kinabuhi. Do you know why he said God controlled me? He was unhappy, he was distressed, he was miserable, and he says, he has done all everything that can be done in his own way. And he forgot about God. He made a pillar, and number two, he built an altar. When he built an altar, it was to show that he's consecrating himself to God. When you kneel down before the Lord and worship the Lord, you are saying, Lord, I submit myself to you. I cannot do it without you. I am consecrating my life into your hands. And my friend, if you look at the life of Jacob, you will find out this is something that, that can happen to us. Jacob returned to the place that God wants him to be. And he builds a pillar to acknowledge God he builds an altar to consecrate himself to God, and God spoke to him again. When he was there kneeling, consecrating, God said in Genesis 5, verse number 1, and God said, Jacob, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and company of nations shall be with thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. 
Verse 12, And the land which I give Abraham and Isaac, to thee will I give it. Tama? Katong yutang lihat na to sa imong grandfather, o sa imong father nga si Abraham, katong yuta, wala naman sila, ihatag na ko to sa imo. And to thy seed after thee. Folks, let me close with this statement. God gave Jacob a tremendous blessing because he came back to God. Do not ever think that God will bless you if you leave away. No, no. The blessings will come if you will be willing to come back. And say, Lord, I humble myself. And I want to come back to you. God has a store of blessing for those who will come. You may have lived for the world and not for the Lord. You may have lost your joy in your Christian life because you do not want God to take control of you. But now, you can come back to the Lord and the blessings of God will be yours. If you are a Christian, that should be the thing that you ought to do if you are away from God. If you are not saved, listen carefully. You are separated from God by sin. Isaiah 51, verse number 1 and 2. Your iniquities and sins have separated you from God that God will not hear your prayer. Come back to the Lord. He has a tremendous blessing for you. He will answer, answer your prayer. At the same time, if you are here and you do not know Jesus Christ, your personal Savior, you want to have peace in your heart, you have to say, Lord Jesus, Please come into my heart and save me. I was witnessing to a driver the other day, not the other, the other week, I think the other month. But the Bonnie and I were there, we were, we were walking, and I witnessed to him, I said, Dong, how are you? You have been driving for us a long, long time, but now you don't have any work. I said, you know, you ought to think about your life. Your wife is not here. Your wife is in the Middle East, and you are alone. You have no income. What will you do with your life? Don't you ought to commit your life to the Lord. You ought to submit your life to the Lord. You ought to accept Jesus Christ. I began to deal with him and give him the summary that you must admit that you are a sinner, that you must believe that Jesus Christ is the only one who saved. You must call upon the name of the Lord today. And you know what he prayed? Ginoo, nakadungo ko aning pulong ni mo, dugay na, tanawa. Dugay na sa gamay pa ko. Karon lang ko nakahibaw nga ako di ay kinahanglan maluwas. Ginoo, kung maluwi ka, sulod sa akong kasing-kasing pa sa iluha ko. You know what? That afternoon, about 5.30 in the afternoon, dudong, siya pilito ba di Dudong, our former driver, received Jesus Christ. Amen? My friend, you can be saved that way if you'll be willing to come to the Lord. Every head bowed, every eye closed, please. No one looking around. The choir is going to sing. Maybe today you're here. Pastor, I ask that, yeah, please pray for me. I want to be saved this morning. I want to be saved. I want Jesus to come into my heart and save my soul. Pastor, please pray for me. Would you raise your hand? Would you raise your hand? Please include me in prayer. I want Jesus to forgive me of my sins, and I want him to give me eternal life today. Pastor, would you pray for me? Raise your hand if you are like that. I will pray for you. I will pray for you. Anybody like that? Anybody? Just raise it up. I will see it. Or maybe in the balcony. Is there anybody in the balcony? Anybody in the mezzanine? Or maybe you're a Christian, you'll say, Pastor, I know that sometimes I feel I am out of the Lord. I have gone far away, but today, by the grace of God, I want to come back to Him. Would you raise your hand? Would you raise your hand? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you right there. Another there over there. Anybody else? God bless you. Anybody else? Yes, I see that hand over there. Anybody else in the balcony? Pastor, God bless you. Yes, God bless you. Anybody else over here? Over here in the left side, on the right side. Yes, I see the hand over there. Thank you. God bless you, Dai. 
Anybody else? Anybody else? Let's all stand, please. I'm going to pray. Thank you. God bless you. Stand. I'm going to pray. After I pray, the choir will sing. And if the Lord has spoken to your heart, push your way to the aisle and come. And say, Lord, I want you to save me. Lord, I want to come back to you in that altar. Heavenly Father, we claim the power of the Holy Spirit today. The Lord, guide, give encouragement to those who need to come today. Because, Lord, you are the best place. You are the surest place a man could be in. Glorify your name in this invitation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The choir sings, and if you are saved, yes, God bless you. Come on. Jesus is calling. Yes, God bless you. Calling for you and for me. Yes. Saint the Portals is waiting and watching. Watching. Yeah. Maybe you like to transfer membership. Yeah, come on. Come on. Come on. We'll sing one more verse, this will be yours. Come on. Yeah, come on. Yeah, God bless you. Yeah, for you and for me. Come home today, come on. <laughs>